we can add Grignard reagents to aldehydes, which will convert them into secondary alcohols. By comparison, adding Grignard reagents to a ketone yields a tertiary alcohol. Just to review, I'd like to show you the mechanism for this reaction. You should remember from chapter 11 that Grignard reagents are really alkyl chains stuck to a magnesium bromide and the carbon atom that's bonded to the magnesium atom really acts like it's a negatively charged carbon. Thus we can think of Grignard reagents as being like a negatively charged carbon. The negatively charged carbon will come in, attack that carbon, that carbonyl carbon, and thrust the electrons up onto the oxygen, giving us this tetrahedral intermediate. Now you'll note that this oxygen, O minus, cannot come down and kick off one of these R groups because they're all carbons. Or if this is an aldehyde, this R prime would be an, a hydrogen. Therefore, this O minus lingers until we quench it with acid. The acid proton then protonates this O minus, giving us this alcohol product. If we were beginning with an aldehyde starting material where we had an H here, then this product would be a secondary alcohol. If we were beginning a, with a ketone starting material, then this product would be a tertiary alcohol. Now let's do some problems. I want you to use a Grignard reagent on an aldehyde or ketone to synthesize the following compounds listed here. I should advise you that this may be a good place to pause the video and attempt these problems first on your own, since I will momentarily give you all of the answers just like in real life. Here is the answer to the first problem. We want to synthesize pentan 2 all which I have drawn here, from an aldehyde or a ketone. You'll notice by looking at this product that it is a secondary alcohol. Therefore, I will be beginning from an aldehyde, not a ketone. What aldehyde do I want to start from? Well, all I have to do is look at this oxygen and draw the chain that's dangling off to the left and turn that oxygen into a double bond to that carbon instead of an OH. This is the starting material that I will begin with. You'll note that the only difference between this starting material and this product is that there is a methyl group in the product right here. There's not a methyl group here. So what Grignard reagent am I going to want to react here? I'm going to want to react the starting material with methyl magnesium bromide. This is like a methyl anion, that is a minus charge attached to this carbon. When I stir this starting material with this Grignard reagent, this Grignard reagent will push its negatively charged carbon into that carbonyl carbon and thrust the electrons up onto that oxygen. This then gives this tetrahedral intermediate. You'll notice that if I count the carbons in this chain, it numbers to five. One, two, three, four, five, which is the very product that I need. All I need to do is just protonate this O minus. How do I do that? By quenching it with acid. That is the answer to the first problem. Let's take a look at the answer to the next problem, which asks us to synthesize one phenyl butan 2 all. Now I realize that that IUPAC name might seem a little bit complicated, so what I've done is I've numbered out a butane to all, beginning from the right. One, two, three, four. This is a butane. The two all indicates that there's an alcohol coming off of carbon two, and this phenyl indicates that there's a benzene ring coming off of carbon one. Thus, this is the structure for one phenyl butane to all. This compound is a secondary alcohol. Therefore, I'm going to want to begin synthesizing it from an aldehyde. How do I choose my aldehyde? I just look at my oxygen and look at the carbon chain pointing here to the left. I convert this oxygen carbon bond to a double bond and remove the hydrogen stuck to the oxygen. This is the aldehyde that I'll want to begin with. You'll note then that the only difference between this aldehyde starting material and this product is all of this stuff to the right, which is a CH2 bound to a benzene ring. What Grignard reagent am I going to want to begin with then? I'm going to want to begin with 
uh, bromine, magnesium, stuck to a CH2 bound to a benzene ring, the very portion of the product that is missing from my starting material. Remember when I look at this Grignard reagent that it really is just like having a minus charge on that CH2. So I could redraw it mechanistically as looking like this. What occurs when this starting material is stirred with this Grignard reagent? Well, the minus charge on this carbon will thrust its electrons into that carbonyl carbon and then push these pi electrons up onto that oxygen. That gives me this product. You'll note that the CH2 here with the minus charge on it is the CH2 stuck here. You'll also note that the entire carbon chain, including this benzene ring, looks identical to the carbon chain shown here. The only difference between this intermediate and this product is this minus charge in the oxygen, which I can quench by stirring it with acid. That will protonate the oxygen and give me my final target product. Let's now answer question number three, which asks us to synthesize this compound, 1-ethylcyclohexanol. I've drawn cyclohexanol, and you'll remember that when we have a cyclic alcohol, it is assumed that the OH is coming off of carbon-1. This part of the name, 1-ethyl, indicates that I have an ethyl substituent also attached to carbon-1. number one. You'll note that this is a tertiary alcohol. That is, the carbon that's stuck to the OH is bound to three different carbons. It is a tertiary carbon. That tells me that I need to begin from a ketone starting material, not an aldehyde. What ketone am I going to want to begin with? Well, what I like to do is get rid of this substituent and convert this oxygen-carbon bond into a double bond. That would give me this starting material. This is the ketone that I will want to begin with in order to synthesize this product. Now I have to ask, what Grignard reagent do I need to add here? Well, the only difference between this starting material and this product is this ethyl group here. So I'm going to want to add ethyl magnesium bromide. We have to remember, of course, that Grignard reagents behave as if there is a minus charge on this carbon stuck to the magnesium. So I could redraw this Grignard reagent as being this. There's a minus charge stuck to a CH2. When this Grignard reagent is stirred with this starting material, What's going to happen is this minus charged carbon is going to come in and attack that carbonyl carbon and thrust the electrons up onto the oxygen. This will give me this tetrahedral intermediate. You'll note that the only difference between this intermediate and the product is the O minus. How do I get rid of that? By quenching with acid. That will protonate this O minus and give me my target product. At this juncture, I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to give you the answer to the fourth problem shown in our earlier slide. I'll instead let you attempt to do it on your own. And if you have any questions, you can ask me during class. As this slide indicates, we can react Grignard reagents with a whole host of different types of compounds, including formaldehyde, epoxides, aldehydes, ketones, esters, and acyl chlorides to generate a wide variety of products. Each of these Grignard reactions is quenched with acid in the second step to get rid of that O minus that would result. I realize that this figure might look a little crazy to you, causing you to proverbially soil yourself right now. I nevertheless want you to take time to look closely at each one of these reaction arrows and pathways until they all make sense to you. We'll discuss them more while doing some in-class examples together. To me, this feels like a great place to conclude for now. Take a quick break and then come back to watch our next Chapter 18 video, which I hope you're looking forward to with as much anticipation as you would a Justin Bieber concert. Unless you don't like Justin Bieber, in which case I've just made a modern contemporary reference that I really don't understand all for nothing.